Welcome back, Fig here. Uh, today I'm going to work on a, another Lego build. Um, so I'm just going to have a nice chill session. So you can see uh, here I've got this Mario Nintendo set. So it's pretty cool. Um, this actually scrolls. There's some sort of um, winding deal on the side that makes this scroll. And you can kind of move Mario up and down and act like he's playing the thing. But overall it should be a pretty cool set. Um, and when I like to build Legos, you know, I like to have it be just a, a relaxing time. You know, it can be just kind of nice to sit around, assemble the Legos. I usually do it one phase at a time. I don't know if you know, these big sets come in phases. So you've got uh, the different bags. It'll say, like, phase one will have, like, four bags or whatever. You get them all out. You open them all up. I know them. Um, I don't remember if I showed that last time, but I put them all together on the desk nicely so that you can easily find what you're looking for. And then, uh, you know, I'll play some just chill jazz music or easy listening or whatever I feel like, really. Um, and then, you know, might light a candle or something, so it's just a nice, relaxing thing. I don't know if you could hear. Um, I had some water going in my electric kettle uh, so that I could make some tea, some hot tea. So it's just a nice, soothing, relaxing time. Um, you know, at work, it's like... My brain's going all the time, and so it's nice to just unwind a little bit. So this is sort of my meditative thing, is going to be building this guy right here. Hope you enjoy it. I'm on bag two now, and you might have seen there's all these little tiny bits here. Um, they usually give you extra because these roll around, they get lost really easy, which is why I have this Death Star goblet, which I put all of my extras in. You can see they're all in there, along with there's a throw disc from the a couple of throw discs from the robots uh, Lego Technic sets way back in the day. Some of these brick separators, those orange ones, and then there's a random coin in there I think I got from my grandpa's coin collection, that sort of thing. So <laughs> mostly it's uh, bits from Legos that are extra from all these different sets. Well, these, sometimes there's so many of these that you can't sort them out. Here I just kind of push them, they're going to roll around, uh, I did my best, I gave it the old college try, you know, we, we did it, you know, whatever. But when you build, I wanted to show you this one here, this is the bucket wheel excavator. Um, that I built, and as you can see, it's pretty big. I mean, this is this is me. This is a Lego set that I built. Very big, um, and it's pretty cool. It actually has these here. Um, it's got a motor, um, so if you turn this on, and you can have these and have it crawl. Um, you know, it's got the wheels that like a tank tire type dealio, and then this will spin. Um, and it's very slow, just like the real one. The real one's huge. Um, uh, bucket wheel excavator. If you look them up, if you're interested in this sort of heavy, large machinery, they're awesome. Uh, but anyway, this picks it up, uh, picks up items, um, throws them in this conveyor belt here, rides along, drops into this conveyor belt here, which swings around, and then drops into a little truck and all that. But the point is that this has so many of these little... Um, pieces like this, these little connection pieces, uh, it had three different, I think it was three different types. It's got the blue ones, the black ones, and maybe one of the, sh the short ones. And so, actually, let me grab something real quick. Okay, this just turned into a show and tell, but that's okay. <laughs> when I was building this, uh, I had all those little bits, and so I needed to sort them, and this, you know, shoebox top situation wouldn't cut it. I had to have so many of them. So I had these cups, which this is, I think it said Lego Batman cup, whatever, just because it's black. I don't know. But and then this one's clear and purple. It's from Lego Friends, apparently, which is not a series of sets that I have ever played with. No shame, but 
I just haven't. And so for some reason, you know, they decided to call it that, but they made these cups. So, that, you know, this got the little pig thing at the bottom. Boop. Um, and so you can stack them inside each other, which is pretty cool. Um, they're not really large enough to be an actual drinking glass. Uh, maybe for children, actually, if you're young or you don't drink very much, this might be nice just for some cool beverages, nothing hot, you know. Um, not like this, which, you know, is actually meant to be a hot cocoa mug, and I also have a Darth Vader helmet one. Um, but anyway, so these I use to sort all the little bits. So if you can imagine when I was building this, it had so many of these little bits that I had this, you know, at least halfway filled up all of these. I think I had these two. Do I have another one? I, I must have another one. I had these two and something else filled up with these little things at least halfway um, all the time. It was crazy. And so those are a lot of little connections for these Technic things like this. Um, and since I went and was getting these, um, and you can see I store these now um, for our Legos. We have all these little what we call grills. So we can use them for grill tops for people to cook on. And some Lego empires that we've had, we've played with, we've used these as money. And they were called grills, and it was based on the color. And then, of course, here's all the little jewels, um, which we've used for many empires to have represent their money. So there's all sorts of, you know, little bits of money. I guess you can't really see that on the camera, probably, but that's what it is. And since I was getting that, I decided I'd show you the salt and pepper shaker. You can see it actually is like a one by one, just a little Lego pig, um, and obviously much larger than a normal one. And then it just they stack on top of each other. So these are salt and pepper shakers. Um, this one I don't have anything in, and this one I'm actually I have uh, cinnamon and sugar in here. Um, because I have normal salt shakers, and I don't know, I just decided to put that in there. But anyway, these are cool. I guess I got a little distracted. But yeah, bucket wheel excavator, this stuff, this stuff, it's pretty cool. All right, let's get back to building.
T here. So here we have the Lego Nintendo. So this is the Lego one. Um, you can see it's pretty good, pretty cool. Um, you know, it opens and closes. It's got the that function with the game. Now it only came with one game. Uh, I showed this to my roommate, and he said, "Well, why aren't there more games? That's more just that's disappointing." And I said, "Well, you we can't actually play them." And he said, "Well, why not?" Um, and I thought, you know, it would be cool if someone, not me, uh, but someone else that had more time and inclination to do it, would take like a Raspberry Pi or something and fit it in here because there's actually plenty of space. I don't know. There's probably no way you can see how much space. Uh, you can kind of see there's a little vacancy in there. So there's actually plenty of space for um, probably if you wanted to shove a Raspberry Pi or something in there. and Or if you had one of those, uh, I forget what they're called, I think they're NES Classics where it's the tiny little version of an NES and it's got the HDMI controls um, and you just plug it in your TV with the HDMI or it's uh, what, USB controls and HDMI to the TV is what I meant to say. But um, I wonder if you could take one of those part and shove it in here and then um, you know make this actually work with the Lego case. Now that's not something I'm going to do but that is something I'd love to see. That'd be really cool. But this is what we're going to go with. It's not going to be playable but that's fine with me. It's still cool. You stick the game in here, you drop it down, boom, closes. You've got the buttons here, um, you've got the controller ports, you've got the uh, little audio video ports there and uh, this connector here. Um, so it just it's just really nice. It's got the the you know the cooling vents here um, and all that kind of stuff. And then the controller you can see is here. Um, so it looks just like an NES controller. You know, kind of makes you want to play. Boop, 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 boop. And these buttons always remind me of like the sweet tarts or something. It's just so satisfying to play on these controllers. You got the start and select here, and then we've got a cord which actually can just plug in to the controller port and it's really easy to take in and out and actually it's a little too easy to take out because I'd like it to be in right now so uh, for display purposes you know boop, there we go there's your Nintendo but it does come out really really easily um, so for comparison I wanted to show you the actual Nintendo here's you, you got your buttons your controller ports opens and closes it has this thing um, now here's you know my Mario game for some reason the oh, it's the game it came with um, it's just Super Mario Brothers and I don't know if you can get that without Duck Hunt on it um, but here we go here's the the difference between the two um, so obviously there's a size difference. The Lego Nintendo is smaller than the actual Nintendo, uh, but you you can get you know you definitely get the vibe of the whole thing. Um, so there's the there's the part you blow into and people say you shouldn't because you spit on it, but it's like well it worked so you know get over it. Um, then you've got the little finger grasp bit here, and you've got the uh, little texture here, which I don't know just a design choice I suppose. Um, so that's pretty cool. I also, just for fun, I had a whole bunch and I was like looking through them. I was like, yeah, so here's the original Legend of Zelda. So that's a fun game. And there's Super Mario Brothers 3, which is just, you know, way better than Super Mario Brothers 1. But, you know, it didn't come with Duck Hunt. So I guess that's the difference. Okay, so here's the NES controller. Um, can you tell which one's real? That one. So this is the real one. You can see the little sweet tart buttons. Click, click. Just they're so round and I don't know. It's just really satisfying. Um, yeah, pretty good, honestly. Like a pretty good uh, version of this. So see a lot of the similarities on this side here. Not much going on, but they actually have that little dip there, um, and they did that on the Legos as well. Then on the back here, you've got the same ports, and then over here you should have your AV. Bada bing. But yeah, and then the top. Wait, which way am I? Uh huh. So 
and then with them opened, you know, it's missing that little Nintendo sticker, the repair sticker. What does that say? It says, Installation, Maintenance, or Service. Nintendo World Class Service Center Hotline. I don't know why you need service to install a Nintendo. It's not like an air conditioner or the internet. It's a uh, plug and play. But um, I guess when whenever we did move, I set up the electronics and all that. So it's like maybe some people don't get it. I don't know. But, uh, but anyway, as you can see, it's remarkably similar. They did a great job. Uh, these Lego ideas and all these sorts of sets, they put so much time and effort into these that it's amazing. You look at the Saturn V rocket and just the details um, of that and how good it looks compared to the real thing. I was just watching a Smarter Everyday video. Um, he's got a second channel where it's even longer videos and they're awesome, but he, he's done some on the lunar landers and things like that. He lives down in Alabama where the Saturn V rocket is actually sitting there. And so he drove by it with uh, Linus from Linus Tech Tips, another YouTube guy. But he drove by and he was like, there it is, that's a Saturn V rocket. And I was just like, this this is awesome. I wish I, you know, like maybe I could go visit that at some time. That'd be so cool. Um, but anyway, so I've got the Lego version and it's just like, that looks the same. It's the same thing. You know, whenever you see people have a Lego or a, an actual model, you know, like a model kit of the Saturn V rocket, it looks the same as the Lego thing. Like, it's so good. Uh, the attention to detail that Lego does for these sets or... If you're building, you know, I have the Porsche 911 GT, I think is what it's called, the, uh, no, it's, it's orange, and it, it's just, the, while you're building the inside of it, there's so much detail in it, and people who like cars, I think, like building it even more. I don't know much about the insides of cars, so to me, you know, it's like, oh, this is really cool, but I don't really know what it does, uh, but it actually has, like, a little stick shift changer, and I drive stick shift, so I know how to drive it, I don't know how to fix it, I don't know what the inside mechanisms look like, but... Their attention to detail for these Lego sets is just phenomenal. And so the, the price per piece, um, the quality of them, the display, the look at this, look how amazing it is, and the attention to detail, I think they're well worth the price. Some people complain, Lego, they're expensive. But you look at the price per piece and it's like, this it's pretty amazing to me. Um, and, you know, you could pay a lot more for a lot less. Some people pay for a lot of stuff where it's, you know, dubious. And it's like, well, you spent all that money on that. Um, also, this has it to where you can open, like I can pop this top off, and you can look inside of here and kind of see. So this, um, well, I don't want to show you like that because, yeah, it's got this cool little mechanism. When this pushes down, this clicks into place. There's all this stuff here. So when you're building it, it's really fun and interesting to see how it works. Uh, the problem is if it's meant to do on a level ground, just like any real computer system, I guess, even though it's Lego. But if you try to do it at a slant, like if I tried it, oh yeah, these come off too, so you can see all this circuitry and stuff that kind of looks like this Amari level, if I'm honest. You, know, you got the, the stairs and you got the pipes and whatnot. But anyway, um, and there's the heat sink or whatever. But but if you try to do this at an angle and you try to push this down, it might it doesn't work right because the stuff doesn't slide around as it should, and so it can break the little pieces, and you got to pull it apart and fix that. And I had to do that once because I was playing around with it too much. And that was a really irritating process, so I don't want to do that again. But anyway, um, let me just reassemble this real quick. Like, that's the comparison of the Nintendo to the Lego Nintendo. I think they did a fantastic job. If you didn't realize that was my opinion so far, I don't know what you've been doing. You've been paying attention, but I love it. I think it's great. It was a lot of fun to build. I'm really excited to build the TV bit, um, and also I got that big pirate ship Lego set I need to do. And then uh, I have a rule for myself, don't buy more Legos until you've built the sets you have. <sighs> it's really frustrating because then I don't get to the sets and then I don't order more sets. It's a good rule, but I really need to build some sets so I can buy some more sets. If you have any other comparisons to make, I don't know, it, I feel like I showed it off pretty well, but if there's something you're like, well, can I see this compared to this? And you might not have that voice, but you can still ask the question. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Thanks.